Oh my gosh! I finally got one! 13th Colony Cast Strength 2024 release, baby! I got the 20th to last bottle, because that's just how lucky and cool I am. But what do I think of this mythical unicorn, what the hell's in the bottle juice? Stick around, let's see. Hello and welcome back to Drams for Dummies. I am the numero uno dummy, Brett, here to grace you with an amazingly awesome, highly regarded hot bottle take. About a year passed when everybody else gave their takes. Like a true dummy, and also like a true dummy. You know what dummies like to do a lot? Dummies like to run their mouths, and I am no exception. I run my mouth. I like to chat about the booze, I like to chat about the music, it's Steve Earle at the moment, and I like to chat about random weird things that come up and out my window or that my cats do. That's just part of the fun of Drams for Dummies, because as a, the numero uno dummy, I'm going to do what all dummies do and run my darn mouth. Some dummies run their mouths in comments and troll and do that kind of stuff, and for anyone who you know either doesn't want to hear a dummy talk that much doesn't find me uh, as charming as my wife pretends to, um, or just really wants the answer of what I think about this, this highly regarded bottle, I have chapters, because I know not everyone wants to hear 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes of blabble, necessarily, to get to the point, especially in this, this modern age of, what, give me the answer right now! Again, I, I've said before, just go to ChatGPT or Google and say, what are the review notes of 13th Colony Cash Strength? And let that, that'll, you'll have it in five seconds and you didn't waste any of your precious time. But if you're here because you like a little bit of this, but you don't need 30 minutes of it or whatever, click ahead. I'll have a chapter for the, uh, the, the tasting, tasting time. So we're past intro, right? We're into tasting time. And then on something like this, a single bottle, there'll be the chapter for breaking it down, scores, what do I think, whatever. So click ahead. Sorry if you're gonna miss all of the magic. Anyway, let's talk about this bottle real quick. Again, if you've, if you've been in around the, the, the channels or whatever, you've certainly seen the 13th Colony um, uh, press and hubbub. You've maybe seen some of the controversy as well. Um, they release this once a year, and I was like, I was bird dogging it this year. I'm like, I need to get my hands on this bottle. I need to know what all this hubbub's about. And if, if you've watched any of my stuff, you know that... Um, I kind of am getting to a place where I'm like, it's mostly BS and it's mostly overhype and it's not worth overpaying for and it's not worth paying over MSRP for. None of the juice really is. So I, I walk into these things fairly skeptical. But I think like all of us, when we get a cool new bottle that we haven't had before and that we've heard a lot of things about, we also have this like optimism of like, oh, this is going to be amazing. This is going to be the one. So, you know, this bottle I paid 90 for, that's retail. Um, it's not listed on the bottle, which is one of the complaints, and I'll briefly cover the, 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 the issues with 13th Colony that people have brought up, brought up. They don't put an age statement on their bottles, but on their website, it does say in their description of the bottle, age five to six years. So we're a five to six year bottle. Again, if you're going to talk about $10 per, if that's your loose gauge of how, what things are worth, then this would be a $50 or $60 bottle right there. So we're already a little above that, but it is a limited release. It is something that doesn't have nationwide distribution. So being a smaller uh, distillery, doing limited releases, you're going to pay a premium for that. So understandable. Something really cool about this bottle. Um, again, I'm going to remind you right now as I ramble that this is where you could skip ahead if you just want to see the point. Um, they did 7,000. They doubled their production. Uh, they don't. They didn't say. They don't say distillation. That's a little little uh, little preview of the controversy. Uh, but they doubled it this year for, to 7,407 bottles, and this bottle is 7,387th bottle, which means I got like the 20th to last bottle. Magic. I'm living. I'm living. Just. I'm living a dream. I'm living. I'm living in, in an ether that most of you can't even fathom. The the lucky world that I live in right now. Um, we already said it's 90 dollars. Um, it is 120.6 proof at cast strength, okay? Again, what you won't find on their label is the mash bill breakdown, but you can find it when you dig a little bit, and it is a 70% corn, 21% rye, 9% malted barley. 
if you just do a little bit of digging, the 70-21-9 mash bill is Green River. Okay, so we know Green River's distilling. We know they do a lot of contract distilling as well, and they've got you know they get good love on their bottles. So for the for the juice in this bottle to be Green River and be high quality is not that's not that's not far fetched at all. Um, I think what everyone's kind of getting tired of there's a little fatigue in the bourbon world about the chase and the unicorns, and then also when. Um, producers, distillers, whatever, aren't really forthright with where their stuff's coming from or how they're making it. So again, I don't think anyone really cares at this point. There's so many good NDPs that are buying and sourcing their stuff, blending their stuff, um, contract distilling their stuff. Um, there's so many different versions of that, you know, doing the different finishes and everyone's down for it. All of that to say, if you stuck with me, God bless you. Like, subscribe, share it, be a patron. Get in on this thing. Let's keep this thing rolling. Help support this silly uh, addiction and habit that I have. Um, but if you stuck with me, it's time to drink. The record company, Rita Mae Young, fantastic song. It is a, it is a little bit higher rye, bourbon rye, 21%. Not high, high rye, but it's up there. It is bright and peppery in the nose. It's got a lot of fruits in the nose. There's some layers in here that are kind of fun within that kind of brightness and, and, and fruity pepper, pepperiness. There's some kind of different things happening. Oh, great song. Ryan Adams, Come Pick Me Up, from his Heartbreaker album, which is like one of the best albums ever. So you're getting that, it's up in that higher, punchier, brighter range, but you're getting caramel. It's kind of like that. It's a little desserty with the fruit. It's got a cinnamon quality to it a little bit. That spice is coming across. Sometimes it comes across like like a white like a white pepper. Sometimes it comes across like a cinnamon. It's kind of in that. It's in that zone back and forth. And then there's maybe some apples and some cherry in there. So it, it's nice. And it, it does kind of have almost like a summer summer dessert kind of vibe to it. Um, I like it quite a bit. I'm going to go 7.5 on the nose. So 7.5 on the nose, which is a really good nose. Real darn solid. Darn good, solid nose. All right, let's go to the palate. Yeah. It mellowed out in just that little time of getting some air in the bottle. It gets into the, into the palate, and it is um, very viscous. It coats the whole mouth. Um, it's not popping. The nose has a little more pop in it than the palate does. It doesn't pop off. You know, there's no pop rocks. There's nothing firing. The, the, the pepperiness of rye isn't like really hitting you in that palate when you first just get it in there. It really just coats in kind of a, it really mellows into more of a smooth, syrupy, chocolatey um, sip. Which is really nice. It's really easy and, and, and for a for a, a 120.6 proof, it's deceptive. It doesn't drink that hot. Um, I would say for someone in my world, I like I like cash drink stuff because I like a little more ride. I like a little bit more layers. And on first or second sip, um, it seems like it's and I won't say one note. It's got different things happening. But it's fairly muted. It's fairly mellow. It's fairly easy in the sip, and then that's and then it kind of and I haven't really thought too much about the finish yet. But the finish has a little bit more um, um, oomph in it, but not sorry. Hashtag bourbon burps. Um, but let me get a score on this. I feel like as it sits in the glass and I keep coming back to it, it gets better and better, which is always nice. There is a, a cherry comes through in the palate. That is really good. It's really good. Uh, kind of think maybe an 8.5 on the palate. Uh, let me see what that finishes. The peppery spicy that's kind of comes at the at the nose sort of goes away in the in the palate and then it comes back at the at the end which creates kind of a fun ride. So it's like yeah, we went up a, a steep climb, but then we sort of kind of slowly came down, and then we did a couple of camelbacks at the end. Um, but that's fun. That kind of makes for a, a fun ride. Starts you off 
kind of exciting, mellows in the palate, easy to drink, um, and then kind of bucks you a little bit at the end. Let me go eight on the finish for now. Let me go second pass, and this will be, there'll be a lot of edits so far, but this will definitely be an edit. So when you see me again, it'll be post all of this, and I'll have done all the hemming and hawing, and I'll have scores for you. I don't know why I'm awkwardly winking. Maybe I'm in a stroke. I don't know. That's some, like toast though in here, so one of three things are happening. All right, here we go. Okay, we're back. Here's what we've got for scores. So nose, 7.5. Really good nose. Palette, 8.5. Really, I mean, darn near great palette. I mean, you're getting up there to great, to, to exceptional, right? You're, you're in that world. Just really, especially if you like the kind of smoother, syrupier, you know, uh, uh, drinks. Uh, it gives you that for sure. And it doesn't kick you too much. It's 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 just it's nice. And the finish, I went ahead back to a 7.5. Was at eight, back 7.5. So 7.5 finish. It's just because it was it's it's good. It's good. It, but it's not doing anything exceptional. It's not great. I couldn't go. Oh my god, that finish. That was great. It was just like that's good. And I like what it did for the overall experience. That it kind of brought a little bit of zip back to the end on us. Uh, so all of that adds up to a 7.8 bottle, which if you if you follow me, you know, is not top shelf for me, which when you're paying 100 bucks and you're chasing something a little bit and you're getting in line or you're you're staging up and you've got on your calendar like the, the drop happens and I've got I got to be signed in. I got to be ready to rock so I can get it, which I did. Um, you kind of hope you're getting a top shelf bottle. So there's a little letdown there. 7.8 bottle, hundred dollars. My gut and my experience tells me I can find 7.8s and 8s and 8.5s for less and on the shelf. So that makes me tell you right now, this is not worth chasing, but nothing's really worth chasing. I love doing it for you. I love drinking in front of you guys. I love having you guys in my kitchen and I just love you guys for being here. And if you're a subscriber, I love you a lot. If you're a patron, I love you more. If you're a subscriber, a patron that's shared this with your friends, I think I love you more than my wife. If you don't check any of those boxes, I still like you a darn lot and I really appreciate you. And I love what you're doing as long as what you're doing isn't hurting anybody. Then do whatever you want to do, man. You only live once. And hopefully as you're living this one life, you're drinking good booze and bourbons. Love you guys. See you on the next time. Bye.